we're, we're now going to hear from, uh, I guess, three individuals, but two in reality. Uh, these are three people that I met in June when we had our event on vaccine injuries. And we're going to start with a St Stephanie, who is the mom of uh, Maddie DeGarry. Uh, Maddie participated in the Pfizer trial for uh, children. Uh, she, when she was 12, she's now 13 years old, uh, vaccine injured. Um, and both Bree and Maddie have tragically and unfortunately been cast aside, ignored, forgotten by the vaccine manufacturers and by our healthcare agencies. So uh, I'm, I'm so grateful that, uh, you know, Stephanie and Maddie, you could come here. Uh, and what, Stephanie, why don't you tell your story? Closer. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, my name is Stephanie DeGarry, um, and this is my daughter, Maddie. Um, when she was 12 years old, uh, she participated in the Pfizer COVID vaccine trial for 12 to 15 year olds at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. This is the first trial any of my kids have ever been in. I never had considered ever putting them in a trial before, but this seemed like, you know, when they asked if they could be in it, it seemed like a win-win, you know. So it's been over nine months since she got her second dose. She can't walk. She's in a wheelchair. She has an NG tube for all of her nutrition. She has constant pain in her stomach, back and neck. She was over there laying on chairs because she can't make it through this. She can't feel her legs, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. When she got her first dose, her reaction was typical. She had fever, body aches, and fatigue, and it went away in a couple days. When she got her second dose, she had immediate pain where she had gotten the injection. And the first thing she told me when she, because her dad took her, was that that didn't happen. That, that hurt way more than the first time. Like, enough to point it out. In less than 12 hours, she developed severe abdominal pain, horrible nausea, painful electric shocks on her spine and neck. Her hands were ice cold when you touched them. She had, um, and on her feet, pain all over her body. Um, her vaccine arm went numb. And I'm finding more and more stuff. Is what I, I, you forget stuff because so much has happened to her. Um, like as I read through things, I, I keep redocumenting everything. Um, she had chest pain, severe chest pain. The way she described it, it felt like it was being, her heart was being pulled out of her neck. Tachycardia that was actually seen on an EKG, um, and she was extremely dizzy, so that she felt like she couldn't stand up. So those were her reactions. I just want to walk through, give you everybody a, little, a better idea of what happens in a trial, because I did not know. My kids have never been in a trial before, so I went in trusting the drug companies, the FDA, CDC, the hospital where the trial was held, Cincinnati Children's, a very reputable hospital. So when you enter the trial, um, everybody uses a trial app, and there are slides, and, and they'll be available later so that you can see more detail. It's called Trial Max, and they log the reaction for seven days after each dose. That's it. The app only allows you to record solicited adverse events like fever, redness, injection site pain, swelling, headache, vomiting, and other typical expected reactions. That is it. And you do, you say mild, moderate, severe. Severe means that you had to go to the ER. You record your fever, like the actual amount, and um, the swelling. So that's all the detail. There's no free form at all to fill in any other reaction that you have beyond the typical non-serious adverse events other than anaphylaxis shock. Um, so there, there's a full list on real, not real.com slash about that will be available. Um, 
What you have to do if you have any other type of adverse event is you have to call the study doctor or the principal investigator. And that's the only way to record this. There's no way to have any unbiased um, way of entering it in and documenting it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going off track. Uh, so we did what we were told. Um, we called the study doctor and they told us to go to Cincinnati Children's ER where the trial was held to check for appendicitis. She did not have appendicitis. They couldn't even find her appendix. What made it into the trial um, record is unclear. And, and yes, we did ask several times and have it documented. We still don't know what was actually reported. So basically, as you can see, this leaves a lot of room for human error and concern of reporting bias coming from the principal investigator, which was Dr. Frank in her case. So what was said about Maddie on um, the next slide, if you go then to the documentation, so the New England Journal of Medicine article um, about the, covert COVID vac uh, the Pfizer COVID vaccine in adolescence. So first take note that the principal investigator for Maddie's trial is the lead author for the New England Journal of Medicine article. The adverse events section has 308 words. 76 of those were dedicated to describing one single patient that had simply a temperature greater than 40 degrees. Not great to have, but that, you know, I think this is a little more severe. There's absolutely no mention of any of Maddie's adverse reactions in that article, zero. In the EUA amendment, Maddie's adverse reaction was reduced to five lines that they claim was eventually diagnosed as functional abdominal pain. It's a stomach ache. By the data cutoff for the trial on March 13th, Maddie experienced over 35 adverse events, different things happening to her, very similar to all the stories that you're hearing here. This happened during the trial. Some examples are blood in her urine, seven times, decreased vision, loss of feeling from her waist down, dizziness, fainting, tremors, muscle weakness, and more. They're all available in the slides, all of her reactions. None of these were mentioned in either document. She went to the ER nine times and was hospitalized three times for a total of 63 days, and this was by June 1st. Look at the dates of that article and around when this was approved. Maddie was in the hospital when the EUA was approved for 12 to 15 year olds. The doctor did not even know it. So let me ask you this. Functional abdominal pain, stomach ache. Does your child, when they have a stomach ache, does that put your child in a wheelchair? Does your child's stomach ache require a feeding tube? Does your child spend 64 days in hospital for their stomach ache? If they did a urine test when they have a stomach ache, would there be blood in their urine? I don't think so. I thought that Maddie would be in the best hands possible in the rare chance she has a severe reaction. That, that was not the case. They did everything in their power to hide everything that happened to her. And that is why this is happening to every, all these other people and kids. So my question is, you're hearing my story. Maddie was not kicked out of the trial. So she's still in it. By the way, so is my son, Lucas, who did not, he was in the placebo group and he did not get the vaccine. So they have one person, if you want to know that, that they can, and he hasn't had COVID. If they minimalize Maddie's reaction to the vaccine like this, I wonder what really happened to those in the clinical trials 
who had a reaction to the, sec the first dose. They never got to have the second dose. That means they're out of the trial. They're disqualified. I wonder what else was hidden in either the Pfizer trial or any of the other ones, because I know there, was things, there were things hidden. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. I've, I've got a quick question. I, obviously, we invited uh, the CEO from Pfizer or some representative from Pfizer. Nobody showed up. Uh, you, because you had the courage to come forward in June, uh, you have had some media attention, not by the mainstream media, but uh, you, Pfizer has to be aware of you. Have they reached out to you uh, since June? Neither Pfizer, the FDA, or the CDC has ever talked to us or attempted to. We have never heard anything from them, ever. That, that, and I that did is, file it in theirs also. Still didn't hear anything. So that is outrageous. I mean, not only totally cast aside, but I think what you described in your testimony, would I would term it as a cover-up. Uh, but thank you, Maddie. God bless you.